special sermon today because it really, um, you know, we say everything is timing in life, and it really is amazing that uh, Queen Elizabeth died just a couple of weeks ago, and this queen of the world gave us an opportunity to look into uh, what majesty on earth looks like. But what I'm examining here is, is um, what would it look like for us to have a king? Because we're the whole Rosh Hashanah is about coronating the king of heaven uh, as our king. Um, so let's see, I called it long, long live the queen, long live the king. <clears throat> With the death and funeral of Queen Elizabeth II this week, Hosts of people gathered, well, that was uh, a couple weeks ago, gathered around her coffin, waiting in never ending queues just to get a glimpse of her majesty. Even if just for her spirit, it was the most watched event in human history. The queen of the world had passed away. People saw her as a symbol of monarchy, but also as a mother and grandmother, the head of a family deeply rooted in history. She was a constant and ever-changing world who extended way beyond her entitlement. It's really hard to be cynical about any aspect of this historic moment. As we said, it gave us uh, a glimpse into majesty on earth as a, I would say, a reminder of the majesty uh, in heaven. Surely there are those who do not love what she stood for. Those who see the crown as a symbol of the dominating power, exploiting other people through imperialism and colonialism. Even though the funeral was a religious service at a church, the procession and everything in between was a display of military power. After all, the queen's coffin was carried on a gun carriage to Westminster Abbey. So as Jews, we see the dichotomy, the majesty and the war. Jews have a complicated history with Britain. The first country to expel Jews from Western Europe in 12, 1290. On the other hand, the state of Israel came out of the British mandate over Palestine. Shortly after the establishment of the state of Israel, my own family walked through Yemen to arrive to Aden, the British refugee cities um, at, the south, at the southern tip of the Arabian Peninsula to then be flown to Israel. So the question is, so would Jews who intimately experienced the double-edged sword of the Royal British Empire still want the kingship of the Messiah that we pray for his, his coming every day to resemble the British model? Is it even possible to convince the future generation that is, it is beneficial altogether? Perhaps there is a different way to unify the people and to create sacredness of something. So what would Judaism have to say about royalty today? So when the people of Israel demanded a king from the prophet Samuel, we just read about the prophet Samuel, who was, um, as Chuck said, the last prophet, because after that, it was a king. The what? A judge, I'm sorry. Uh, a judge. And then the, uh, the, king, <clears throat> the king started. Moses said to the people, I know that there'll come a time where you'll want to be like everybody else, all the nations, and you'll demand a king. So he really put restrictions on what that king would look like. Um, and, and we'll get to that. So Samuel explained to the people that the king will cost them dearly. Why? Because the king would increase horses, a symbol of military and might. Because, because horses are expensive, the king would increase your burden take you and your children to serve him, essentially bringing you back to Egypt. That's what Moses said. At the end, you'll work so hard to keep the horses of the king that you would be slaves in, in one way or another and go back to Egypt, not just because of the, that burden, but because of the hierarchy. It will create a hierarchy clearly with all the power 
that the commoners uh, are not going to share the same place. So do we want that? So personal story myself in 2009, I went to uh, London to just on a short business trip. And my parents used the opportunity to meet me in London and we just walked in it. We didn't even know the timing of it. But God really blessed me with this experience because I experienced, we turned the corner and all of a sudden we see the whole pageant here. The, the queen, the princesses, the, the, prince, the princes, everybody uh, with the carriages and the, the horses, the whole thing. And we didn't even have a camera. So we were, it was, you know, back then. So uh, we were really upset that we can't take a picture of it. But people said, well, she's going to go open the parliament. That was the day she went to open parliament. And she'll be back. So in the meantime, we went and got a disposable camera and, and we took pictures on the way back. But I have to say, experiencing in person, and I remember the, the most powerful experience was not even seeing the queen. It was, it was definitely, oh my God, seeing the queen and, and all the, uh, the royal family and the carriages and all that beautiful. But the horses, the horses, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of horses it was amazing. All of course beautiful and and well well kept, um, but then you know I thought about it and, and uh, that Queen Elizabeth and as they were uh, talking about during the funeral everything that was her favorite thing horses were her favorite thing so there's something about uh, a a king on earth someone with this much power uh, how did Moses know? You know, thousands of years ago, that it doesn't matter when you have that much power. That's where you're going to end up with a lot of horses, <laughs> whether they're horses, physical horses, or you know, horses in. Uh, in Why you're laughing because you like horses too? I've been there, done that. Been there, done that. Yeah. So somehow, you know, it gets there. So this event, which is steeped in tradition, is reminiscent of the meticulous details required even when we had a king in, in ancient time and when we had the temple and everything was prescribed and everything was according to the ceremonial uh, rules, rules. So, you know, as much as I appreciate and love the pageantry, the pomp and ceremony, I'm not sure that I would like this to come back. In the time when, when they demanded Samuel to have a king, uh, he succumbed to it because that's what the people wanted. And he looked for a king. And we know that just like in the, the, the British royalty, there were good kings and bad kings. And you really, it's hard, to, it's hard to predict those things. And it's a big chance that the people are taking. So, you know, what we say is that uh, after the destruction of the temple, the second temple, when the Sanhedrin decided that they're moving their operation from Jerusalem to Yavne and became um, more of a, a Beit Midrash, a place of learning, rather uh, than a, a place of, uh, uh, of these the strict uh, rules of one, um, one uh, you know, in a sense that the Kohanim were royalty uh, for us. So after that destruction, really, the, the rabbis took that kingship, that hierarchy, and give, gave back uh, the power to the people and made it really egalitarian in many ways. Originally, we also had the, the three uh, the, the, the three arms of government, in a sense, the governing bodies. We had the king, we had the high priest, and we had the prophet. And two of those were religious, uh, of course, leadership, the, the high priest and the, uh, and the prophet. Uh, but none of them, uh, well, just one of them was a totally egalitarian in the sense that um, even women were uh, prophetess. So um, we have, in a sense, what the what the um, what the rabbis did, 
they brought the model to the prophecy instead of taking the model of the religious leadership uh, from the temple they gave it they brought it to the uh, to the prophet so everybody can share that so I would say that in conclusion uh, that what we have coordinated uh, for thousands of years now, and I really don't think that if the Messiah came in today, uh, we would uh, we would want him to look as much as I I really love the, all the pageantry and I, for England it works, but I really don't think the Jewish people would uh, ever uh, agree to this model again. And I think we're happy with with what we have. I mean, it would be nice to be more uh, together and, and uh, united, but around something else. And what is that something else? Is that nothing, the no thing, the, the God who's, who's no thing. That's the king that we coronate. And of course, God has a queen. The, the king has a queen, and the queen for us is Shabbat. Again, something that we, it's silent, it's no work, it's no thing. We come together around that, and that is the most stable thing for the Jewish people. So I would say, long live Shabbat the Queen, and long live God the King. Shana Tovah.